We're going to add power, punch, impact and presence to a track using only five basic adjustments to arrangement, level, panning and pitch. Here's our starting point with all of our ideas playing in one 8 bar loop. And here's how it'll sound after. So let's go back to that 8 bar loop. We first identify any obviously conflicting parts. In this case, the three synth riffs are quite similar in style and frequency content. These three riffs are fighting for space in the mix as well as the listener's attention. Here we've split the riffs up across the arrangement, allowing the full force of each to be felt. The same concept can be applied on a note-by-note -note basis. For example, the second riff features two interplaying samples, a stab and a chord. We can remove or mute some of these hits so that only one is ever playing at a time, for improved focus and impact. kick is made of three layers. There are two clicky top layers and an 808 sample for the low end. It has loads of weight but not much of that chest thumping punch. Back in CM211's Geek Technique, Owen Palmer explained how a kick drum's punch comes from a downwards pitch sweep around 100 to 300 hertz. And we can add this using a fast pitch envelope inside our sampler. This trick can work on other sounds too, especially snares and subby basses. The kick and bass line play simultaneously in the same frequency range, creating low end mush that eats up headroom. We can see this clearly using a spectrum analyzer. This one, Melder Productions M Multi Analyzer, shows multiple channels at once. The bass is blue and the kick is red. It can even show you where frequencies are colliding, and as we can see, the kick and bass are clashing pretty much constantly. There are many possible fixes. An easy one is to shorten the kick to an 8th note or 16th note. We'll use a 16th note.
and remove the bass notes that coincide with the kick. If your kick comprises layers like ours, you only need shorten the low end layer. Now the clashing is greatly reduced. Another common approach to get kick and bass working together is to first set the kick drum to the desired length, then use sidechain compression to make the bass line duck in level whenever the kick drum plays. Alternatively, you can use a dedicated sidechain pumping plugin. Or, you can simulate the effect using volume automation, like this. You don't need to delete or mute any bass notes when using these techniques. And finally, we use auto panning to make toms jump rhythmically left and right. We can then turn the channel up 3 dB so it sounds subjectively as loud. As well as creating an exciting effect, this increases separation with the center panned elements like kick and bass. We also use the auto panning trick on the rave stab riff. With all of that work done, we should now be able to push the track much harder into the limiter. But first, let's listen back to that original 8 bar loop for comparison. Here's our finished demo arrangement to play you out. <laughs> 